I would like to welcome you all today to our webinar entitled Create, Update, and Discussion. I am Rina Manuel and I am your MC for today's event. As we all know, Republic Act 11534 or the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives for Enterprises or CREATE Act was finally signed into law by President Duterte last Friday, March 26, 2021. While most part of the law was kept intact, there were particular provisions which were vetoed by the president. Today, we are glad that we have with us this afternoon, no less than the principal author of the law and key representatives from the DOF and BIR to discuss among others, the implications of these vetoed items plus implementation concerns. Um, knowing the importance of this discussion, the Phoenix to the public so that we may all be updated on this very important piece of legislation. I know that we are all excited for this afternoon's discussion and to start our program, I would like to call on a distinguished and well-respected tax luminary to formally open the program with her welcome remarks. She is the co-chair of the Capital Market Development Council a past president of the Tax Management Association of the Philippines, a past president of Phoenix, and the chairperson of the Phoenix Tax and Legal Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all warmly welcome Attorney Benedicta Dick Du Baladan. Thank you very much, Rina. I hope I am coming in clear. Well, they said I should have the opening, opening remarks. So what all I can say so that we can save on time is I welcome you to this very important webinar, which is CREATE that we have long been working for. And so may I uh, go ahead and introduce our speakers. There's a full list of speaker, distinguished speaker, speakers that we have lined up for you today. And for our first speaker, our first speaker is a legislator par excellence who has taken upon himself the moral duty to protect the revenues of this country. A sui generis, a class of its own, who told me to read the Bible before writing a law. And then he said, after that, you read the constitution thereafter. An indication that he puts God above all else. And if I may read to you his favorite uh, section of the constitution, it's article six, section 28, paragraph one, that he had memorized. And that says that the rule of taxation shall be uniform, shall be uniform and equitable, and the Congress shall evolve a progressive system of taxation. Ladies and gentlemen, the person I am talking about is Representative Joey Sartes Salceda, a congressman of the second congressional district of the province of Albay. He is currently the chairperson of the House Committee of Ways and Means and the vice chairperson of the House Committee on Appropriations and Committee on Economic Affairs of this 18th Congress. He is also the co-chairperson of the Economic Stimulus Package Response Package Cluster of the Defeat COVID-19 Special Committee. Previously, he also served as an economic advisor to various Philippine presidents and was the presidential chief of staff of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. He also worked as the chief of staff of then Congressman Raul Rocco and a congressional fellow of Speaker Ramon Mitra. He has shepherded and championed CREATE from beginning to the end, being a comrade in going around place, far places in the country to generate buy-in. And he is a critical figure in the last stages at the Bicameral Conference Committee. Our first speaker today whose task has not ended yet as there are two more packages left to work on is my idol, the eminent Joey Sarte Salceda. Our next speaker, I will have to introduce them all at the time so that uh, successively so that we won't waste any time today. Our second speaker is herself an established institution at the DOF having started her career after graduation at the DOF and rose to the rank of assistant secretary. 
I met her in the early years of our career when we were still serving as lieutenants of our bosses, she at the DOF while I was with the BIR. And our role then was to slip small pieces of papers with cues on technical questions thrown to our bosses. Fast forward, Tere is now a high ranking officer and her work covers fiscal policy and planning initiatives with focus on the tax reform program, revenue forecasting and fiscal programming. She also briefs credit rating agencies and international fund managers and investment bankers on current developments in the fiscal sector and the tax reform package. Tere, as we fondly call her, is from the UP School of Economics with a master's degree on development studies from the Institute of Social Studies in The Hague, the Netherlands. And during the question and answer portion, we will be joined by two high ranking officers of the BIR as we have expected that there would be a lot of implementation uh, issues that will be asked. So today during the Q&A, we will be joined by attorney Laro M. Barcelo, who is the assistant commissioner of the legal service in the BIR. Previous to that, he worked with the legal affairs office of the office of the president in Malacanang. And he also was vice president, trade and investment development corporation and the chief of staff for legal of the office of the BIR commissioner. And then he will be joined by attorney Elenita Berry Kimosing, assistant commissioner for project management and implementation service uh, at the office of the CIR. Uh, Lenny actually is a, is a former colleague of the BIR 20 years ago. She is a CPA lawyer who has been with BIR for 43 years now. She also rose from the rank and taking various posts as revenue district officer, chief of collection enforcement division, and a technical assistant of the deputy commissioner for operations, among others. Among her significant projects and assignments are the digital transformation of the BIR, and of course, the tax reform. So we will be joined by all these eminent uh, guests today. May I now call on my favorite Congressman Joey Sarte Salceda. Let's go straight to the next page. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, I would like to thank Phoenix for this opportunity to explain um, uh, the reform that uh, uh, Congress, together with the executive, has uh, have um, jointly pushed in order to improve the competitiveness, as well as since it was being crafted during the pandemic, um, somehow at least um, it uh, became part of the stimulus package of the government. Okay, next. So I'll just try to um, explain the core principles of the reform. Next. Well, these are the principles of our committee. Whenever I consider uh, any, any legislation, the first thing I think of is who will pay for it and who will benefit. So letter A would mean FIES. Second is we do DSG, which is the aggregate impact as to employment, inflation, as well as uh, GDP growth or GVA which is actually the king for me after knowing that uh, it will not um, unduly affect the poor, the real thing, the real driver of the committee is gross value added. Then letter C of course is CBA. So as tax incentives are public investments, they should be justified by CBA that the state stands to gain more eventual revenues and the state gains more from the impacts. Next. So this is actually next. And then of course we look at what other countries are doing. That's why we introduced the digital tax, which of course uh, Dick Baladad was most uh, gracious 
and generous in sharing immediately. But uh, because of her, because of her um, um, our resource person, we were cut down to uh, only that the digital VAT rather than the other things that I would have wanted. Then, of course, the precautionary, precautionary principle. We always try to anticipate if things go wrong, if suddenly there are real major exogenous or even internal changes. So every tax policy has to have safeguards against abusive behavior. And I think uh, one of the one syndrome of um, that I am always wary of is how this tax would be used uh, in a political economy like the Philippines, which still dominated by rent seeking behavior. Pardon, but uh, I still not cannot change my mind there. I think uh, rent seeking remains to be a dominant feature of our economy. And then of course, lastly, uh, that uh, it should always follow Paripasu, that's in the constitution. The committee tries to apply the same treatment to similarly situated um, enterprises or product market feed. Next. So having explained that, let's go to the core principles of the reform. Essentially, we wanted to lower corporate income tax to 30, but we to make it regionally competitive from 30 to 20. But of course, um, the, our original uh, was changed at the Senate side. So as a compromise, we just went down to 25. Uh, it said that 1% per year for, for 10 years. That's part also of the stimulus. Then we codified incentives into a single menu that is indifferent to whether you are inside or outside an echo zone. So, and the second one, and I think this is where uh, a bias, which is also in the constitution, towards countryside development, as well as, of course, um, gross value added. Then we rationalize incentive management through uh, and strengthen FIRB and return IPAs to primarily as investment promotion, not regulatory agencies. Next. So actually, if you take the net present value, using an uh, a net, uh, discount rate of seven percent of eight percent, um, eight percent then, uh, actually the NPV of the CI. CAT alone would already be around 7.1 trillion or 67% of our currently depressed market. So uh, next. So fiscal, actually my own engagement here is that as early as 1998, I filed them using the Australian model, the Subsidy Council Act, one of which, if you read it, the, there is a subsidy oversight council, which is almost like the FIR, send signal to economic players that incentives are a scarce resource and therefore should be managed like government expenditures. Next. And um, in my second um, term, I also introduced the Omnibus Investment Incentive Code which was performance-based, which were incentives were essentially performance-based, uh, double deduction R&D, double deduction in training and reinvestment. So actually all these uh, actually uh, were combined, uh, were um, what you can call the seeds for this reform. Next. So next. I had, they say 200 plus briefings. I, I don't know the exact number. I think it would be 220 or to whatever. Press engagements and interviews to explain Sitira or create. Next. 
So let's first start with the taxation of the corporations next. So this is the comparison of the seat in Asia as of 2021. Um, the green one is really for SMSE. So we're still not the lowest, but at least we're now more comparable with Myanmar. <laughs> but we're not that far as the 30%. But obviously, I think uh, in the next administration, I think the 25 will go down to 20. That's my expectation. We just have to go with the tide. Uh, and I think for the Philippines, it will always be Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia and Malaysia. So those are the four countries that essentially I look at so we would be 20 some um i think eventually um next so the largest fiscal reduction measures in the philippine history domestic smes from 30 to 20 domestic corporation below five from 30 to 25 foreign corporation 30 and five and the minimum corporate income tax from 2 to 1%, but only applicable between July 1 to June 30 to 30, 2023. I think, I don't know what, it, I don't know, but uh, there are team up members here, so they would know what the minimum corporate income tax is just uh, government borrowing from you until you make money. Next. And then the nonprofit from 10 to 1%, foreign source dividend received by domestic corporation, 15% exempt, actually uh, under create, it is now exempted, subject to proof of reinvestment of earnings in the Philippines, and the improperly accumulated earnings, uh, also known as retained earnings. So before there was a 10%, now it's repealed. So zero, next. The, as I've said, uh, this was great because uh, it took the Senate so many years uh, because we passed it in October, 2019, 2018. Uh, it took them until 2020 uh, to uh, consider it. So we used the measure essentially as uh, an instrument of uh, social policy. So the temporary, there is a temporary reduction of the MC from 2 to 1% and the reduction of percentage tax from 3 to 1% effective July 1, 2020 until June 30, 2023. So that's about um, three and a half years, uh, no, three years, next. There's also temporary reduction of corporate income tax for non-profit schools from 10 to 1%, effective July 1, 2020 to June 33, 2023. And the regional headquarters, the so-called ROHK, 10%, 10% special income tax rate until December 31. But there will be regular seat effective July 1, 2022. Uh, this was, there were, there are only two of them anyway, right? Uh, Christian? I don't know how many they are, but they are not that many. Tamaba. Two, yeah, next. Then the VAT on sale and importation of capital equipment from 12% to exam, starting July 1 to 23. VAT on sale and importation of all prescription drugs from 12 to zero. But 2023 uh, basically is uh, that, um, so the, the thinking there is almost like three year uh, reprieve. So VAT on sale of importation of vaccines for COVID 
from 12 to exam. Next. On the VAT provisions. Tapos na yun na. Next. So VAT on e-books. Exam. Forever. VAT on drugs on cancer, mental illness, tuberculosis, and kidney. From 12 to exam. Forever. Next. And uh, VAT exemption importation and VAT zero rating on local purchases of andyan pa rin. On crude oil. Uh, nagkaroon ng konting ano dito kasi um, I wrote um, actually a memo for the president explaining why we took this position. Kasi yung pagpasok dito ng, ng crude oil um nagkakaroon napakalaki po talaga ng impact pagdating po sa stranded uh, refunds so it, it's taking the BIR more than two years so ang inano namin we compared it to Singapore to several other countries actually they don't tax crude upon importation they tax it upon removals so we just made it ano next So let's go now to the second part of the create. So pre-create IPA a different regime. So most of them have forever except for BIR for BOI, which has six years, basically ITH. So cumulatively, the ITH would be six to eight years and GIE 5% forever. Next. So, bakit dito ka ganito? Uh, actually, this is one of the major introduction I made to the original Citira, which is uh, in the original Citira, which is really to favor all the other areas, the green ones, and secondarily through the emerging metropolitan or areas contiguous, and the NCR is the one that's red because of the propensity to invest in NCR because of the ecosystem and because from a political economy, you're spending 700 billion for a subway to serve 13 million people. So you can just imagine the need in this country to distribute um, public investments and therefore since incentives are essentially public resources. Next. Para na balik So these are the incentives for export enterprises. ITH, of, depending on your tier. Um, in explain ba natin yung tier dito? Tier 1 uh, is basically basic. Tier 2, intermediate. Tier 3 is essentially advanced. Tier 1 would look like... Um, Essentially, what example? Um, uh, Doon kasi sa dati, meron ano eh. Um, and then, they have a choice. They get four years ITH if you're in the capital region. But if you're in Metro, if you're in Metro, if you are in Metro Dabao and Metro Cebu and contiguous like Bulacan, Pampang, Bulacan, Rizal, uh, Cavite and Laguna, you get five. All other air, six. But if you invest uh, on tier two, that is the intermediate, uh, like um, intermediate uh, manufacturing, like uh, let's say crude refining, which was defined uh, in, in the Maano, in the Mabito. Uh, five years and then 10 years ED. So they have a choice of whether using um, enhanced deduction or SEIT right from the start and six years and 10 years ED, seven years ITH. For tier three, which is like robotics, artificial intelligence, all the other, all the other fourth industrial revolution enterprises, you get six years plus 10 seven plus 10, then seven plus 10. So 
if you relocate from NCR to all the other areas, you immediately get three. Like from NCR, you go to Bulacan, you immediately get three upon commercial cooper op operations. But you have to close down. You have to proof of closing of closure. Now, if it's recovering from an armed conflict or a major disaster like Alba, you get another two. So enterprise may choose between SCIT or ED. This is for export. Now, the incentives for um, domestic market enterprises, next, is still like that, except four, five, six, but shorter shorter ED or enhanced deduction of five years uh, across the board. And then it's the ITH that essentially still, if you relocate from NCR to let's say um, Quezon, you get three years more. And if you, if it's a, no, if it's a recovering from, from disaster, then you get two years more. Next. So tier one includes activities that high potential for job creation, take place in sectors with market failure, generate value creation. Initially we had a list, but it was vetoed. So the vetoed part I am showing. So you say fishing, forestry, agribusiness, so they were vetoed, it's up to the BOI to set the SIPP or the Strategic Investment Priorities Plan or are emerging owing to potential comparative advantage. Next. Tier two is easily easy, includes activity that produce supplies, parts and components in intermediate service that are not locally produced but are critical to industrial development and import substituting activities because the Philippines is now a large domestic market with 110 million. And prior to the pandemic, uh, if you follow our trajectory, we could have been the 13th largest or the, well, that's the best, or the 17th largest economy. Um, next, tier three is activities which are more advanced. So, pati FDA approved investigational drugs, um, etc. So, you know what's vetoed. Next. So, the enhanced deduction, which is my favorite, ever since, how I wish everybody goes here, it will also give a lot of um, a job to team up, is power expense. Currently, allow deduction is 150%. Labor expense is 150. Bakit? Bakit 100? This compared to the existing ones in the PESA CHESA, no? So instead of 100, if you were not uh, incentivized right now. So this is the difference between the current incentive versus future. Research and development from 100 to 200 percent. If you buy from Albay, you get 50 percent more. If you reinvest in manufacturing, currently there's none. Up to 50 percent of reinvested profit within five years from time of reinvestment. And depreciation allowance, none. Now we have 10 percent for buildings and 20 percent for its uh, onion accelerated. No? accelerated uh, depreciation schedule. Next. And wala uh, yung ko You forgot. Actually, there is an enhanced null ko. Uh, can you go back there? Actually, there is an enhanced null ko there, which is actually the one one thing I have done in my whole life that will justify more in infrastructure. Kasi ngayon, may nol coca under, pero this one extends the enhanced nol co for another five, no? Christian? 
Well, the enhanced by three plus five. So, um, ang ibig sabihin niyan, kung nag-nonol kong tayo ng three years, uh, under CP, under create, magiging eight. Kasi we prove uh, the language says uh, that the enhanced null ko uh, flows from. So, yung lugi mo nung first year, you have, uh, you're supposed to, I mean, kung hindi mo para ma-recover uh, on the fourth year, you can continuously, uh, no, so that actually that eight years uh, enhanced null ko, I know. Can I read my paper on the extend expanding local? Uh, I, I can go back to it later. Huh? Um, next. So for GIE recipients right now, they have a sunset provision of 10 years. For ITH and GIE, proceed to 10 year GIE transition. And then for ITH only, just finish your ITH. Next. Tapos na ba? Tax incentives management. Next. So this is pre-create. This Congress decided to incentive package. Now you have FIRB, which uh, oversight and approves tax incentive subsidies uh, sold by. So from yung mga ina um, binibenta ng mga IPAs like PESA um, must, must comply with or must be within the priority sectors determined by the BOI. Unlike before, yung BOI and APAs are actually of parallel structure. So, um, Parang hindi naman ako masyadong ano, inano ko lang. So, uh, dapat itong FIRB binaba-baba ko. Ano lang to, maning ano lang to, um, drawing. So, dapat yung Congress na sa taas. Pero ngayon, yung FIRB sa ilalim. So, ano no? Um, so the power to approve tax incentives for projects or activities with investment capital below 1 billion is being delegated by CREATE to the IPAs. So hindi nila kailangan dumaan sa FIRB. So above 1 billion. Pero ang basis ng 1 billion ay actually laking dabate nito will eventually be TPC or total project cost instead of investment capital which is because investment capital excludes operating capital operating capital and land so there was a big debate inside uh, the bicam i was fighting for tpc of course the senate won but their winning was vetoed next So special hunting tools for elephant size. So upon the recommendation uh, of FM, the modify the mix or manner of availment of incentives or craft the appropriate financial support package for highly desirable projects. The grant of ITH shall not exceed eight years. Thereafter, a seat of five may be granted. The period shall not exceed 40 years. Ito po yung kay Presidente, kung malaki, Provided that 50 billion or its equivalent direct employment of 10,000, comprehensive and sustainable development with clear inclusive business approaches and innovation, the threshold, this threshold, this criteria shall be reviewed every three years by FIRB. Uh, likewise, recommend the cancellation of the grant of the performance targets are not met. The power of the president is suspended during fiscal years when an unmanageable fiscal deficit is declared by the president on the advice of the DBCC. 
So ito yung tinasabing special powers. So kung malaki, gusto lang nating tapatan yung ginawa ng Vietnam Ski Samsung. So actually that is the driver or driving motivation for this special um, uh, special powers for the president. Next. So, sabi ko kanina, kailangan uh, ang bibigyan lang yung strategic sa atin. So, to be formulated by BOI, kailangan yung makakakuha ng incentives ay yung investments na strategic. So, in coordination with the government, etc., um, kakaroon tayo ng strategic investment priorities plan submitted to the president shall be terms, scope, coverage, terms, condition of gratuit enhanced deductions, valid for three years, subject to review and amendment unless there would be a superseding event that would necessitate its review. I hate these words. Um, basically, um, um, <clears throat> ang, ang SIPP, uh, andun din po uh, yung determination and tiers. I think that would be letter D in number three. Next. The SIPP may also contain recommendation for non-fiscal support and the consideration of high-skilled jobs to grow local pool of enterprises, as well as MSSE, type of non-fiscal support uh, may offer our facilitation of registration, request certification, logistic support, custom product testing, certification, training of skilled workers, and shared and common service facilities. So I think you can imagine uh, what this can uh, involve. I think that can involve what uh, Gloria Macapagal did to get TI into Clark. So, but the considerations are, there are five considerations. Um, supply to domestic and global value chain, increased sophistication of products and services. Sama ng boses ko ngayon. Expansion of domestic. Ngayon, ngayon tapos na tong create. Parang wala na akong kaano-ano, no? Wala na yung ebullience ko. Attraction significant foreign capital or investment. Next. Consideration in the inclusion of projects and activities in the SIPP. So nandito na ang labanan. Uh, nasa BOI, DTI. Substantial amount of investment, procedure is employment, net exports modern advanced or new technology processes leading to attainment of the SDG, addressing missing links and gaps in the supply chain, promotion of market competitiveness, enhancement of capabilities of Filipino enterprises and professionals to produce and offer increasingly sophisticated products and services, contribution to food security. Ito ay nangyari nung ano, kasi abang nagkakaroon tayo ng ASF, um, I think right now um, we are importing 15% of our food requirements and bulk of it are smuggled. <laughs> uh, like fish, you buy it in China for 50, it's smuggled into the Philippines for 100, sold to a trader from 120 and you buy it for 180. Same with um, with the meat, you buy it actually at 110 pesos. You put vat uh, or I bat and I know, and then you get 140, and then you buy it in the market at 240. So I don't know. Um, so we put we thought that agriculture. Um, despite the structural constraints of lack of suitable land. Um, malay mo, meron, meron tayong technology that would, uh, Barma, I would, could imagine the kind of agriculture that Japan and Korea has and Taiwan, despite being small, but are big exports. 
services and activity that can promote regional and global operations in the country. Next. Requirements for inclusion in SIPP should they will go for go a formal evaluation process to determine suitability projects and activities. Merong ba nilagay mo ba dito yung ano yung yung uh, binito na annex? Uh, there was actually an annex which was vetoed, so you would have known immediately what is tier one, tier two, tier three. Kaso it was vetoed. Uh, para na hard coded sana yung iba para you don't have to go through all this process so but uh, ready naman po yung BOI dahil uh, the BICAM was actually um, amenable to hard coding some of the industries immediately para wala nang ano um, Anyway, so anyway, uh, hindi nga pala na ano, inayawan ng Senate pala yung annex na proposed namin from Congress. So wala, wala ho siya, hindi siya vetoed. So only application for project that listed in SIPP shall be accepted. Project not this SPP shall be automatically disapproved. Next. Amendments to and publication of SIPP. Amendments may be made by BOI to include additional areas, alter any terms of declaration of an investment area, temporarily suspend projects. So, have a very, so it, it, BOI po ang gagawa ng SIPP. Pero ang SIPP shall be published in at least uh, one newspaper or the official gazette. So, is BOI ready? Well, that's a question. You should have invited the BOI. Pero sabi ko nga kanina, may annexes kami na which uh, Congress during the BICAM, which are the long BICAM. <clears throat> I had 17 BICAM. I almost fainted in the last BICAM. But by fainting, I that terminated the, the BICAM because it was getting too long on the house side. Next. So tax administration and enforcement. <clears throat> RSU to be subject to regular seat between this is a, a sticking point that needs to be addressed to comply with the forum harmful tax practices. Um, and dami dami tayong ginagawa ng mga harmful tax practices. Uh, especially transfer pricing. No GI seat for domestic enterprises. It is redundant considering PH is one of the largest markets. Um, so ito po yung mga tinanggal namin under the CREATE na wala nang seat or yung GIE. Uh, I think forever also. I think we should list this is the first time I'm explaining actually to Phoenix, uh, to anyone about my understanding of what we created. Next. So, ilagay mo number three ang forever because that's a harmful tax. Review rules on creditable withholding tax. So, DOF will review rules, regular processes for the withholding of credible tax once every three years and direct BIR to amend such rules and regulation that are found adversely and materially uh, adversely impact the taxpayer. So, kailangan ibasabatas na rin natin ito. Nasa batas ba ito? So, di na natin kailangan ilagay sa EOPT. Next. Special powers to penalize tax abuse. Uh, the Secretary of Finance can order the closure of locators found abusing ecozone privileges, uh, especially smokers, oil. Oh my God, uh, the ecozones are um, the biggest conduit of smuggling in this country of almost one trillion. <laughs> um, uh, 357 billion of that is oil. And I suspect there is a pipeline uh, in the seabed that essentially comes from Subic 
and ends up in the botas. And uh, I think um, that's where my committee actually is looking at. Even kahit isda, kahit ano, dito sa, sa bayanan. And there's also a clawback loss, which is uh, also new. Allows the government to order the refund of tax incentives if there is any misrepresentation in the application just to gain more incentives than deserved. It's almost like a disgorgement. Next. What's next for the House Ways and Means? So, ito yung mga nasa Senate, yung MBUC, yung POGO, yung... Anyway, so we have all these things. So, next, um, we have Pipita, also in the Senate. The NDS is also in the Senate. General Tax Amnesty, um, the um, AOEOI. Actually, na approve na to eh. May General Tax Amnesty ako with all three. FATCA, AOEOI, and um, uh, Bank Secrecy Law. So, ibig sabihin, lifting of Bank Secrecy. Kaso, syempre, hindi gumagalaw. It's in uh, some... some it's in our committee on rules. <laughs> Baka mapagalitan ako ni Madjo. Next. So, the other fiscal reforms, we are now stricter tax enforcement against kasi merong mga RR na pag-export, walang stamp. So, yun ang ginamit ni MIT para maka, no, diretso sa, no, and stricter enforcement of fuel smuggling, rationalized import product. Pero hindi na to create eh. So, uh, next, 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 until we end. Improving sustainability of government exposure to ODA. Uh, na improving PALCO and PCSO revenue operations, BIR tax administration. Uh, I think that would be the AOPT, especially na yung services ay yung yung resibo at saka yung invoice invoice lang lang ang magiging ang gagamitin next i think uh, reduction of contingent liabilities for pension for military uniform personnel i think we are now doing that we have sss pension reform and pl health uh, sustainability reform next so that ends my presentation um hindi ko po na cover lahat kasi biglaan yung ano eh um ka-approve pa lang nung sabado eh ay sabado ba ano ba ngayon friday friday yeah. ay friday. friday friday na gabi nila labas so ano ba ngayon lunes Yes. Monday. So, hindi ko, ano po, biniglaan nyo lang ako. Pero, <laughs> if you invite me again, I will have a more refined ano, uh, presentation. So, I would like to thank uh, again uh, Phoenix for this opportunity to explain. Uh, kung ano ba ang meron dito? One, uh, doesn't matter whether you're inside or outside the zone. You can be anywhere, anywhere in your own current offices. Uh, you can get an incentive if it is as if it's an SIPP activity. Ecoson don't matter. They are only primarily a promotion agency. Number two, no more forever. So wala nang may sit. My sunset na 10. Number three, although it's only because of fiscal impact, kaya in bis na 10, kung sa ang exit ng if you're a new uh, investor, you're export oriented, you can get as many as 17 plus 3 plus 2, 22 if you invest in Albay. Uh, but uh, if you're for domestic market, 
uh, you will only get 22 minus 5, 17. So in other words, uh, you get 10 years for exports and five years for imports. For simple reason, we have to pay for our food imports. Uh, the current uh, structure of the Philippines is such that um, we are we have reached the structural limits because of our population and our own archipelagic character, as well as our political economy. That uh, I think importation. Uh, basically will always be part of our you know, uh, of our um, national life so kung isipin mo i can name you several um, industries that could be self sustaining here but uh, essentially the country is just uh, not right now uh, that is what create is trying to address is to get more domestic productive investments because our corporations are too big for our own economy so they find uh, more opportunities abroad so what we're trying to do is to essentially incentivize new industries under the SIPP para naman we reduce our so-called broker uh, ang ginagawa natin is uh, send cheap labor abroad and buy cheap products from China, buy 50 pesos fish from China, and send uh, our household service worker to Italy uh, to earn a thousand dollars a day, uh, um, a month. So basically, that's the traditional. Of course, it's being I know by BPOs as well as um, which uh, allows us to know. So, laging may pumapasok eh. Kaya I think that is a signal for me to stop. I can go on and on. But I think uh, those are the three key main features uh, of the of CREATE as we have uh, designed. So, it's not perfect. But I think the, at least the uncertainty is gone. Uh, it was approved in January 23, 2018. Approved in the House in 2019. So we must have lost three years of direct foreign investment of almost $20 billion. So I expect the same, uh, the postponed uh, direct foreign investments to come back. Um, but of course, um, um, siempre meron dyan yung mga, ano, the vaccines will come. Uh, I think there's no way that we will not get those vaccines, but uh, you can time your entry. But uh, I think um, if the, your only basis is that the vaccine is not yet there, it only affects your current estimates of the near term uh, GVA or GDP. But in the long term, I think create will create. So thank you very much and uh, good day to everyone. Thank you, Congressman Joey Salceda, for helping us to understand the new create law more. So at this point, let us welcome our next speaker, DOF Assistant Secretary Maria Teresa Habitan. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you to Congressman Joey Salceda uh, for very uh, almost exceptionally uh, and perfectly uh, laying out the, uh, the premise for RA 11534, Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives for Enterprises Act or CREATE. After all, is the uh, very major sponsor of this bill. So thank you very much to Phoenix for inviting the DOF to this briefing. This is a reform 25 years in the making, which is ratified by both houses of Congress last month and signed into law by the president just this Friday. So allow me to begin with a key messages. CREATE has transformed, uh, next slide please. CREATE has transformed, not just a tax reform bill, 
it is also now an economic recovery um, legislation amid the COVID pandemic. CREATE will provide much needed relief for MSMEs through a reduction in the corporate income tax rate and an investor uncertainty by culminating the years long discussion on the rationalization of incentives for business. The passage of CREATE strongly projects that the Philippines is back in the game when it comes to attracting investments. With CREATE, the economy will adapt and grow as more quality jobs will be preserved or created while having little to no inflationary effect. CREATE will also help mitigate the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and improve the quality of lives of millions of Filipinos through various tax relief measures, which I will discuss later. Actually, Congressman Salcedo has already discussed them. Next slide. CREATE is the largest fiscal stimulus for firms in our recent history by providing 1 trillion pesos worth of tax relief over the next 10 years. CREATE introduces an enhanced incentives package that is performance-based, time-bound, targeted, and transparent, and expands the role of the Fiscal Incentives Review Board, or the FIRB, an existing government body, to improve the governance of incentives. I am sure that these principles are not new to FedEx members, as you have been strong partners of the government in this reform. Through numerous briefings held over the past few years, you have seen how this reform has evolved while maintaining the principles of a good corporate income tax reform. Next slide. We would like to take this chance uh, to thank you for your support. Phoenix was among the top business groups that supported this reform and clamored for its passage. Your support sent a strong signal to our legislators and allowed for its urgent passage. CREATE is the product of strong partnerships within and outside government. This is a win to be shared by all Filipinos. Next slide. Allow me now to share the details of the two major components of the reform. The first is the corporate income tax rate reduction, complemented by various COVID tax relief measures, making it a stimulus measure. The second is the modernization and rationalization of fiscal incentives, which addresses the governance of the incentives. From having the highest corporate income tax rate or CIT rate of 30%, which is the highest in ASEAN, CREATE reduces that immediately to 20 to 25 percent, which would be within the range of other ASEAN countries. Next slide. With CREATE, MSMEs registered as domestic corporations will receive the largest ever CIT rate cut in the country's recent history, with an immediate 10 percentage point reduction for businesses with total assets of not more than 100 million pesos and taxable income of 5 billion pesos and below. Domestic corporations that earn a taxable income above 5 million pesos benefit from an immediate reduction of CIT rate from 30% to 25%. Foreign corporations will also pay a lower rate of 25% CIT. For non-resident foreign corporations, the lower rate will be enjoyed effective January 1, 2021. As temporary relief, the percentage tax rate for non-VAT taxpayers has been reduced from 3 to 1% from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2023. The minimum corporate income tax rate has also been reduced from 2 to 1% over the same period for all corporate income taxpayers. Next slide. Proprietary nonprofit educational institutions and hospitals also benefit significantly from the reduction from 10% to 1% of the special income tax rate for July 1, 2020 up until June 30, 2023. Regional operating headquarters, meanwhile, will continue to enjoy their 10% special rate until the end of this year and be subject to the regular CIT starting next year if it does not apply for other incentives under CREATE. The special rate for ROHQs has been flagged by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and not repealing this special treatment could result in blacklisting of the Philippines with detrimental effects on our overseas Filipinos in their financial transactions. Foreign source dividends received by domestic corporations will now be tax exempt, subject to reinvestment of earnings in the Philippines. The improperly accumulated earnings tax or IAET has been repealed by CREATE. Next slide. Various tax relief measures other than income tax cuts have also been introduced with the enactment of CREATE. From January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2023, 
the sale and importation of capital equipment and raw materials for PPE production, all prescription drugs, medical supplies, and devices, and equipment for COVID-19, and vaccines for COVID-19 are VAT exempt. Next, electronic books and the sale and importation of prescription drugs and cancer, mental illness, tuberculosis, and kidney-related diseases are now also tax exempt moving forward. Now we proceed to the second major component of CREATE, which is the fiscal incentives rationalization reform. In summary, all businesses applying for tax incentives will continue to deal with investment promotion agencies or IPAs. Approval of incentives will be done by the IPAs unless the proposed project or activity exceeds an investment capital threshold of 1 billion pesos. Above this threshold, Applications for incentives will be decided on by the Fiscal Incentives Review Board, an interagency cabinet level body to oversee the grant of fiscal incentives. All IPAs and registered business enterprises, these are businesses receiving tax incentives, will be subject to the oversight of the FIRB. The FIRB is modeled after similar agencies in other countries, such as Malaysia and Singapore. The FIRB will promote transparency, accountability, good governance and participation in the grant of tax incentives and ensure that the Filipino people get bang for their buck in the incentives granted to businesses in exchange for jobs, technology, and value added to the economy. There will be a single list of strategic priorities for investments called the Strategic Investment Priorities Plan or SIPP to be defined by the Board of Investments versus the current system where different IPAs have different priorities. An income tax holiday of four to seven years may be granted to firms applying for incentives, depending on location and industry. This is slightly longer than the four to six year ITH period previously offered by the government. However, ITH extensions will no longer, will no longer be given under grade. Instead, there will be additional incentives for relocation outside of NCR or in disaster or conflict areas. Next slide. The special corporate income tax rate of 5% on gross income earned or GIE for exporters is retained under CREATE. This is the first option that exporters can avail of after their IDH. Instead of enjoying this tax for forever, though exporters under CREATE may only enjoy this incentive for an initial period of 10 years, which may be extended by another 10 years. However, we would like to note that this is a generous compromise given that earlier versions of this reform propose shorter GIE incentive periods at a higher rate. The GIE incentive is not applicable to domestic market or domestic oriented enterprises, as this would give them a due advantage over Filipino companies that are not receiving incentives but catering to the same market. Altogether, exporters receiving incentives may enjoy tax perks for up to 17 years. Throughout the incentive period, Firms will continue to enjoy VAT and duties exemptions for importation of capital equipment, spare parts, and supplies. The other option that firms can avail of after the IPH are enhanced deductions. We will discuss this in the following slide. But in general, exporters may enjoy the tax perk for 10 years after the IPH, while domestic-oriented enterprises may enjoy this perk for five years after their IPH. Next slide. Businesses receiving the enhanced deductions incentive will be subject to the prevailing corporate income tax rate, but they are allowed larger deductions as a percentage of their expenses. Um, this has been very thoroughly explained uh, earlier by Congressman Salceda, so I shall move on. Um, under CREATE, the president may also grant extraordinary incentives for up to 40 years to investments that meet certain conditions. These super investments that we also want to attract are those that provide considerably high levels of jobs, training, technology, and other forms of value added. Altogether, CREATE makes the Philippines fiscal incentives very generous and at par with packages offered by other countries. For businesses currently receiving incentives, CREATE provides a long transition period. For businesses currently enjoying the ITH incentive, CREATE will allow them to finish their ITH as scheduled. Existing firms under the 5% GIE incentive 
will be allowed to enjoy the incentive for 10 more years. This is another very generous compromise on the side of the government and our legislative champions. As a transition period in past versions of the reform were much shorter and dependent on how long the GIE incentive was being enjoyed. CREATE mandates all IPAs to establish a one-stop shop to facilitate the setting up and conduct of projects or activities, including coordination with LGUs and other government agencies compliant with the ease of doing business law of 2018. Enterprises may continue to avail of the one-stop shop facility even after expiration of the incentives. This will help ensure that all IPAs perform their role of promoting investment and job creation efficiently and effectively. My presentation ends here. I would like to call on our president, Attorney Francis Edlin, to make the formal closing remarks. Uh, magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. Magandang hapon kong Joey. Um, thank you, uh, Tess, uh, Asek Tess Kabahabitan, and our two panelists from the BIR, uh, Larry and Be um, Barry, for the very in interesting discussion. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Congress and the President for this CREATE Act, which, as uh, Congressman Joey said, is not only a tax measure and vision to make the country competitive or at least less competitive, less uncompetitive, but also a relief and stimulus package to help our businesses and economy address the devastating effect of the pandemic. As noted by ASEC Tess, uh, the law had been in the making for 25 years and its enactment by itself is a great accomplishment of this administration. Thank you most especially to Kong Joey for ably quarterbacking this landmark legislation. I personally know how hard it had worked, but um, we really have, again, have to give it to Kong Joey for having this uh, legislation for the country uh, finally after 25 years. Um, nakita nyo naman sa mga diskusyon, no? um, madaming issues no? that need to be uh, clarified under the new law. Okay, uh, the um, discussions, the panel discussion ably moderated by uh, Uni, whose uh, knowledge of the new law is very apparent, uh, is, um, um, is very telling. No? Therefore, uh, we in Phoenix, um, we uh, strongly urge our government agencies, especially the BIR, to issue the implementing rules or, and regulations or at least guidelines to help clarify these issues. Uh, this is especially true for the reduced corporate income tax rate in the light of the forthcoming tax deadline this April. But as Yuni was trying to say, it would be good if the BIR can consider uh, an extension uh, of this deadline if uh, legally feasible to do it. Thank you for to our tax and legal committee headed by Dick Dubaladad and we as a director um, uni for and our hardworking staff for putting this well attended webinar together. I understand there were more than 800 and that, that number alone uh, shows beyond doubt no, the interest in this bill. And Kong Joey don't uh, agree, don't, uh, don't be surprised if uh, we will hold, hold another webinar and I, I was really uh, listening and glad to hear that you're willing to be a speaker when we do decide to have that webinar. I'm sure there are a lot of issues that need your insight, that need your background to, uh, uh, about uh, on this law to help uh, our public understand this, this new law. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Attorney Francis Edwin, uh, Phoenix President. Thank you also to our speakers, panelists, guests, and to all our participants for joining us this afternoon in this CREATE webinar. And as